Welcome back YouTubers to another Smackdown review and TLC preview ahead of the upcoming pay-per-view with me, Mr. Parkin, on behalf of, you guessed it, The British Fist. If you have any comments on this show or the TLC pay-per-view coming up, please let me know down in the comment section below. But before I actually go on to this review itself, I just want to give some quick, brief thoughts on the upcoming TLC pay-per-view, which will probably really set the tone for the rest of this video, in my opinion. Okay, TLC. It's just another pay-per-view, in my opinion, that I'm just not all that bothered about. I, Even though it's free on Sky Sports for me and I can just watch it for no cost, you know, I still am just eh about it. I mean, number one, TLC has more handicap matches than actual gimmick matches pertaining to the pay-per-view. I know many people have said that, and I'm just reiterating, but the only match that has any kind of gimmick pertaining to the pay-per-view is the main event. There's more handicap matches than there is TLC or tables or ladder matches. I mean... You know, none of the title matches really involve any kind of gimmick. You know, it's ridiculous. And I think how you feel about the pay-per-view in general really just depends on how you feel about the main event and how they've, like, gone about doing this main event. I mean, this supposed epic match 11, 12 years in the making has three weeks of rush build, and they're supposedly going to unify the titles. You know, I'm all for unifying the titles, but I really don't like how WWE have done this at all. It just doesn't feel important in any kind of way. Um, I mean, you just kind of get the feeling that there's going to be some screwy finish and blah, 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 and, you know, all that kind of shit's going on. We're going to have another screwy finish to a pay-per-view. And I won't be watching it. I just, this to me marks another pay-per-view where I really don't care or really want to review or watch any pay-per-view from the WWE. Let's just go into my thoughts on SmackDown and I'll elaborate thus so. You know, sometimes in wrestling, it's the little things that matters. And the first thing I see on SmackDown is a ring surrounded by tables, ladders, and chairs. And the two belts, the WWE and the World Heavyweight Championship, are hanging above the ring. And it's not like I said, sometimes the little things that matter. And that kind of makes the presentation of the show just feel a little bit more like TLC, like the TLC is coming up. Just a little thing. As for the opener, Daniel Bryan another, in another wrestling match against another member of the Wyatt family. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, we've seen him face Luke Harper and Eric Rowan a couple of times now. And it's... Just getting to the point where it's like, oh, Daniel Bryan in another match against the Wyatt family member. All right, okay, well, there you go. And as for the match at TLC, you know, I really wasn't that bothered about the match there on SmackDown. Um, as for the match at TLC, the Wyatts, in my opinion, really have to win this one. Otherwise, they'll look like total chumps. But the, to be honest, they look like total chumps tonight in the whole segment. So maybe they should lose, really. And to be honest with you, I think it would have been better if they had Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt in some kind of chair match or something. I'm not sure why they did this whole handicap thing with uh, with Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. It kind of puzzled me a little bit, but you know, I mean, it could. I mean, it's a handicap match, people. It's going to be more about story really than anything else. So don't expect too good of a match from this. The Wyatt family should win, but you know what WWE are like with their baby faces? They'll have him overcome all three members of the Wyatt family, and then their steam will totally go. There was two segments on this Go Home Show edition of SmackDown which pertain to the tag team championship match, which is going to be happening. At TLC, that is a fatal four-way tag team match between Cody Rose and Goldust, the Real Americans, Big Show and Rey Mysterio, and Ryback and Curtis Axel. You know, the first segment of the two, we had Cody Rose and Goldust versus the Real Americans, and the Real Americans get the win over the tag champs, um, similar to how Ryback and Curtis Axel did. So I guess they can get put in the tag team title picture. You know, it's kind of lazy, but I guess simple booking to try and get you know a guy, a team into that championship picture. You had Big Show versus Ryback, just cause. It's a total squash as well. Big Show just totally squashed Ryback back as well, which is kind of funny. And now, apparently, Ray and Big Show have just been added to the mix as well. And, you know, I'm kind of sitting there thinking, I'm glad they've announced a, a title match for the Tag Team Championships, but why not make this a ladder match or a tables match or something? Just something more exciting than just a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match. I don't know. It just, it's been built up really last minute, and you could have at least gave it a gimmick to match the pay-per-view. I don't know. It's just, you know, so Ray Mysterio returns to TV. Big Show has just been in the main event at a Big Four pay-per-view, and now they're both like afterthoughts in this tag team title match. You know, movement up and down the card, WWE, have you ever heard of that? And again, this has all been incredibly last minute as well, so it's like we really don't even, can't really even care about this match, really, to be honest. And I have one other question, not really anything to do with this, but why did WWE never make a feud out of Los Matadores and the Real Americans? A quite culturally relevant feud, which could have been done to get Los Matadores over. I say this because I can't remember the last time I saw real, you know, Los Matadores on TV on SmackDown. Anyway, and why did they never do that? I thought that could have been a good feud for Los Matadores and the Real Americans. Well, could have got more heat on them, but 
guess WWE just couldn't take that five minutes to, you know, write a couple of promos or book some matches or something and make it end on a pay-per-view. I don't know, I'm just saying. So we have Damian Sandow versus Mark Henry to hype up the Intercontinental Championship match we're going to be getting at uh, TLC between Damian Sandow and Biggie Langston. And, you know, I get the story here. Damian Sandow is facing Mark Henry, who is friends with Biggie Langston and everything. I get that. But at the same time, it's just more mediocre build and mediocre booking for a mediocre feud, for a mediocre belt that is the IC Championship. And to be honest, I think WWE are just seeing this as filler and they're trying to get us to the Big E Langston versus Mark Henry feud, which will probably happen at, at, at Royal Rumble, possibly even WrestleMania. That's what I think they're going towards anyway. And, you know, Big E versus Mark Henry, I'd be all for because it means they'll be turning Mark Henry heel again, which is how he's best. And, oh yeah, the build was so bad for that match, I kind of forgotten it existed. Uh, I guess, um... Well, Sandow isn't going to be winning, is he? So it's going to be Big E Langston, of course. How many times have we seen the Shield versus the Usos now? It's like the kind of go-to match for, oh, we need to give the Shield a win, or, oh, we need to give the Usos a win. You know, we've seen it way too many times now. I really didn't care about this match whatsoever. The Shield win, of course, as they damn well should do, as the Usos aren't booked on the pay-per-view. You have CM Punk doing a Shield uh, basement promo, believe in the best in the world. Kind of reminds me of Corey Graves' stay down thing, which is stupid in my opinion, but there you go. So as for CM Punk versus The Shield, it's another time I'm thinking, why don't they just have CM Punk versus Roman Reigns? You know, Roman Reigns is the big star. I guess they don't want Roman Reigns to eat the pin or something. I don't know. But again, it's another one of those matches where you can't really, you don't really want CM Punk to lose, but you don't really want The Shield to lose. And if the Shield lose, they'll look like chumps. And it's like, well, what do you do here, really? This is why it should have just been a singles match or maybe involve the Usos and make it a six-man tag TLC match like it did last time, which involved Ryback and the Shield. I don't know. I just don't see the point in these handicap matches. I really don't. Uh, I just flat out don't like the handicap matches on this show. And they involve CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, two people that I'm guessing a lot of people will be in favor for. You know, maybe they're just doing this, like I said in the last week's review, maybe they're just doing this to keep CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, like, away from the title scene, and it's just the authority, you know, kicking them in the nuts, etc. I don't know, but as for the direction of WWE right now, you know, the main event really just says it all, in my opinion. So we were supposed to have a match between Alberto Del Rio and Kofi Kingston, but the match never actually happened because Miz attacks Kofi on his entrance, continuing on their feud. I guess we finally know now that Miz is heel. I guess, even though they've kind of like switched and swapped it around so many times now. I guess Mrs. Heel, you can kind of tell when they pump in canned booing, who is the heel and who is the face, etc. But we all know why WWE didn't have Del Rio compete and why they had to book it like this. is because, because Del Rio got a concussion from losing to Hudik, I mean Sin Cara, on Raw again. And it just kind of makes me laugh that Del Rio is now losing to Sin Cara a couple of weeks in a row. LOL. Okay then, let's talk about the main event segment from Raw and the main event segments from this week's edition of SmackDown, which as we all know is involving John Cena and Randy Orton. As for the main event on Raw, I must admit I did watch it and, you know, I enjoyed watching it. It was good, compelling television. It was pretty good. They tried to present the whole thing like it was a big deal. They had these Hall of Famers there, all the ex-champions, etc. They did present it like it was some kind of big deal. It's just a shame that they've not built it in the way which seems like a big deal like at the main event of WrestleMania, but there you go. But at the end of the day, you know, I like the fact they're trying to set up storylines for WrestleMania, like, you know, possibly Daniel Bryan, Shawn Michaels, or Triple H and CM Punk, etc. But, you know, if you were going to present this match as a big deal, surely you would have the whole segment devoted to Cena versus Orton, and it really wasn't that. At the end of the day, the focus was on Stephanie McMahon and Triple H and Randy Orton, not Cena versus Orton. It was like, you kind of like had this strange aura when you sort of left the show, like, John Cena is with the authority? What's going on with him? Is he going to turn heel? No, of course he's not, because he's John fucking Cena. But the main event angle was good, don't get me wrong, it's just, the focus was in the wrong areas. And once again, the focus is on Triple H. Okay, as for the SmackDown segments, I kind of had to do a high, I kind of had to do a little face palm there, an imaginary one. As for the segment, you had, in the Iron Man event, you had John Cena's promo. Now, John Cena is the kind of guy that can, to a degree, and I'm saying to a degree, talk people into seats. You know, WWE knows he generally delivers. This is why he is in the main event most of the time. They know if they give him a mic, give him some bullet points, or give him a general script he will be able to possibly talk some people into the seats, which not many people in WWE have the ability to do, in my opinion. But it's kind of funny, isn't it, when you look at John Cena's promo, 
And is it just me? Or is John Cena making himself act like he's the underdog? It's like, we all know John Cena isn't the underdog. We all know that you know, he's trying to use the excuse that Orton has had everything fed to him. Really, John Cena? Orton has had everything fed to him? Take a look in the mirror, buddy. That's all I'm saying. But, like I said, Cena, in my opinion, if you compare Orton and Cena's promo, which I'll do later, Cena's promo was a far better sell for TLC, in my opinion, than the Orton, than the Orton segment, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Orton apologizing to the authority, with the fans chanting, Daniel Bryan and boring in the crowd. Very surprised they didn't dub that out. I really am. But you know... When the fans are consistently chanting for Daniel Bryan and they're chanting boring in a main event segment which involves Randy Orton and Triple H, that something is clearly wrong with the WWE's connection to their fans. And you know, you look at Orton's promo and it was okay. You know, but it's just it's just not the same. You know, why have they had all this stuff with Stephanie McMahon happen when the focus should be on the supposed epic match between John Cena and Randy Orton? It's like this final segment, in my opinion, in my opinion, should have been John Cena and Randy Orton face-to-face, -face, whatever. Kind of like it was on Raw. But instead, it was about, you know, Raw and apologizes to the authority and the Triple H. And Triple H has to be the focus of the segment once again. You know, it's just, at the end of the day, whose sell was better? Let's just get rid of all the hatred for John Cena and Randy Orton here. Based on the two segments they did... Which segment to you was the better sell of TLC, which is essentially what these promos are designed to do? Was it John Cena's segment, or was it Randy Orton apologizing to the authority? Vote down in the comment section below. Get rid of all your biases, and give me an honest vote in the comment section below. If this seemed like a half-assed review to you, then it was. Because WWE are really half-assing it lately, in my opinion. I mean, it seems like you've got... John Cena versus Randy Orton in the main event, and all the focus has got to go on that and Triple H, and everything else just kind of falls down to the bottom of the list. I mean, you look at the IC title feud, uh, the tag team title feud, mm. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan's direction, mm. in my opinion. You know, you look. I didn't even talk about the Divas match in this because I don't care. I don't care about AJ Lee versus Natalia. I should care, but WWE haven't done anything to make me care about those kind of matches. So. That's one of the reasons why I'm not going to be watching TLC this Sunday. I may watch it, maybe, but I'm definitely not going to get, go through the effort of coming on air on camera and talking about it. I may talk about it a little bit in next week's review if there's something interesting on it, which there probably will be with Orton and Cena. And that brings you on to the next point. Main event is Orton and Cena for the Unified Championship, or whatever the fuck they're going to call it. And it's like, at the end of the day, do, me, do I, as a wrestling fan really want to see that match. In my deepest heart of heart, I'm thinking to myself, right, okay, I can see what WWE are doing. The two biggest superstars today, you could quite argue, are John Cena and Randy Orton in the WWE. But then you look at it from another business standpoint. It's like the show before last week, without the slammy stuff surrounding it, when they main evented, it did a, the lowest rating of the year? You know, in my, and you know, I come on here saying that Daniel Bryan draws low ratings, etc., but John Cena and Randy Orton, they're not exactly drawing ratings either. I mean, I know it's got to that time when ratings generally aren't that high, but you're putting your two biggest superstars out there in what you're trying to say is the biggest match in WWE, and it's, it's losing viewers. I mean, WWE gained 600,000 viewers this week because of the Slammy Awards and everything, but they barely, they drew a 2.6 rating, you know, with three and a half, whatever, million viewers, with their two, supposedly two biggest stars in the segment. And you wonder why people are chanting for Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, and why they're chanting boring and all this stuff. And you wonder as well why John Cena has to try and pretty much trounce off um, Daniel Bryan's heat. You do. Because if he doesn't, he's not really going to get much pop. He really isn't, is he? So TLC this Sunday really depends on how you feel about the main event. I'm really not all that bothered about it. I think that the fact this match is being done at TLC, it just kind of means it's just kind of a... Storyline continuance match. I mean, it's not really going to be a final end. I think the final end will probably be at WrestleMania 30 or Royal Rumble or something like that. But if they were going to build a match like this, and you know, they're guaranteeing a champion, but there's two belts hanging up. So one person could pull down one belt, one person could pull down the other. So how the hell is that guaranteeing a new champion? Why don't you just make a new belt and put the one belt up there so you know you're going to have one winner? Did WWE not think these things through, which logical people would? Storytelling 
is important in wrestling, and a lot of the times all it needs is a bit of logic or a bit of detail or just a bit of thought, and it's something that it doesn't seem like WWE really has right now. But anyway, I've been waffling on enough in this video about TLC and as it is in the main event. Give me your thoughts on the show, the main event, you know, whatever you want to say down in the comment section below. Oh yeah, and this week's edition of SmackDown, which was just... Again, I didn't, I didn't care for this edition of SmackDown. I really didn't. There wasn't really much there that really got me into it. I, I kind of skipped through some of the matches and like some of the backstage stuff. So yeah, you decide on that what you will. But thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.